context and data flow diagram sample 8 check clearing system now essentially what is a check clearing system a check clearing system stores bank checks submitted by customers for batch processing at a specific time a check is a paper-based document unique to each customers which they can distribute via their own personalized checkbook which is provided by their bank Customers will use checks for financial transactions between other individuals as well as businesses without the need for specific paper-based monetary values, making them popular for large financial transactions. They also make transactions safer as if the check is lost or stolen or contain an error, it can be cancelled in the period before it is processed as well as traced to accounts that may have used the check or um, an error has taken place and monetary has been given to an account that it wasn't intended for. In order to write a check, a customer needs to write the full name of the individual or business receiving the check, as well as the amount of money they are paying to the recipient in both number and text formats for verification. So if you're giving $230 via the check, you write 230 with a dollar sign, dot, dot, and zero cents, but then you also have to write as well, spell out $233. So T-W-O-H-U-N, yada, 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 you know, spell $233. Okay, so that's to verify that the number written and it's, uh, it doesn't have an extra O put on the end, you know, when someone goes to cash in that check. And that's why you've got the text written value underneath it. The check is also dated by the customer at the time of distribution. The recipient of the check then takes that check to their own bank for processing in order to receive the payments of funds. So this is the system we're going to look at today. And look, we're going to look at it quite simply as if the recipient and the giver of the check are both from the same bank okay um, by doing so that means there's no external entity of another bank involved here we're keeping it simple because it's all internal to the one bank system in order to help you understand this better now i also want to point out to those ipt students out there the use of micr so essentially each check contains specialized magnetic ink that links each check to the customer who is the owner of the checkbook, providing details such as the customer's account and banking branch. The magnetic ink can then be read by a magnetic ink character recognition reader, so MIRC reader, in order to automate the data collection process by the system. So this is when we're obtaining the checks, not processing the checks obtaining the checks and putting them into the transaction file. So the MICR reader processes checks at speeds of 1,000, 2,000 checks per minute. That's a lot of checks, okay, within a minute. Okay, the transactions are then batch processed at a later scheduled time by the system, with the user accounts being updated by exchanging the funds between the accounts when the checks are batch processed. Okay, so not at collection when the MICR is used, okay, but when they're batch processed at the later date. So just to illustrate why they, what this is, and I've shown this before in another video, here's my check and I fill out my check there. It's this bit down the bottom where the magnetic ink is, okay, so that's in the checkbook. This line of magnetic ink is on all the pages, okay, of each individual blank check there. Okay, and so it links it, it has the account information of the distributor, the owner of the checkbook, as well as the banking bank branch details and other things as well, such as um, uh, the routing of payments and um, other technical information related checks. So if I fill this in, I've given it to a person, this person takes it to their bank and then upon collection, okay, this goes into the system and it's collected by an MICR reader, okay, which then stores it in the system's transaction file for uh, processing at a later date. Okay, so now let's look at the context diagram of this system. So here is my check clearing system. Okay, I'm the customer. What I first need to do for this system to work is obtain a checkbook. Okay, so I got to firstly give my account details, which is retrieved through my bank card that links me to it. I usually also have to show my driver's license as well to apply for it as well to verify that it is my bank card, but it's actually the bank card that links to my account. From here then, once all the, che the checks are made and it's authentic, the customer gets a checkbook and they can begin writing checks to people. So the customer gives out a check to an individual and we'll call them the check recipient. Okay. And then they take the bank check. Okay. To the bank. Okay. And they give it into the bank. The bank processes the check in order to process the check. They need to know the account of the actual person who is giving in the check. So they can link that actual bank check and the funds that have been given to them to the actual recipient's account. 
Okay, and then they'll get a receipt of the transaction saying $300 is going to go into your account. And usually that is not immediate because remember this is a batch system, but there is still an actual receipt given at this time to show and to say that they have submitted the check. Okay, a proof of purchase still, although it is a batch process that will take place at a later date. So let's look at this in the form of a data flow diagram. Okay, so we've got the customer and as we said, they need to firstly prove that they're a customer of the bank. So they need to usually take their bank card uh, to the actual bank, okay, to access their account and obviously give their PIN number two and potentially, as I said before, sometimes show their driver's license as well in order to access their account, okay? Once their PIN number's entered into the account, okay, it need, then needs to get authenticated through the account's database, okay? And once it's confirmed then, we see that this person has an account with a bank, okay? And then obviously we can create them a checkbook. Now, I've said here just launch checkbook, okay? They need to then go to an interface once they've been confirmed as a customer of the bank, okay? And then we say, okay, let's develop a checkbook for this customer, okay? So we develop the customer checkbook, okay? So that they can write checks, okay? And obviously we link it to their account information which we've retrieved from the account's database. Okay, once the checkbook's created, Okay, we've retrieved their account information from the actual database. Okay, we can then deliver the checkbook to the actual customer. They can begin writing checks to people. Okay, and as we said before now, they've given out checks now. Okay, so we have a check recipient. This check recipient takes their bank check, okay, to the bank. Okay, and the first step is the bank needs to collect the individual check on its own, okay? And we need to watch my spelling here because I've read the individual bank check is collected by the actual system. Now, sometimes this is automated and you can give them into um, specific ATM machines that can take checks, okay? But all, usually it can go through an actual uh, participant who then collates it and then puts it with other checks, okay? So they so we get the bank checks and then we put it into the system, okay? And as we said, this is where we use MICR. We put all the checks together, okay? And we collate them, okay? And that is so then they can be entered into the transaction file. So they are organized and put into the transaction file. Now, they are not processed yet, okay? Merely the data is stored in the transaction file for processing at a later date. Now when that scheduled time for processing comes, we are gonna batch process all these checks data, okay? So it's not just the one check because it is a batch process, we're saying thousands of checks that have been accumulated possibly within a day. So this is probably a time of the day where we batch process all the checks there. So the data needs to be retrieved from the transaction file. So the transaction file records, which is simply all these thousands of bank checks that we've collected here, and they all get batch processed at the same time, okay? And Obviously, it's an automated process, okay, and I don't need to go into the advantages of batch processing for this, okay? It'd be very repetitive for an individual to do all these thousands of checks. Now, once they are batch processed, okay, the transaction information is then, because it's been processed, sent for updating, okay? In order to update the user accounts, we once again need to access the accounts database. So, firstly, we need to retrieve both the customer and the recipient's account records, because essentially, we need to deduct the values from the customer's bank account and then transfer that money into the recipient's account. And then that data is obviously put back into the account's database, okay, with the updated account records. So I hope this is giving you an understanding of the actual um, check clearing system and what essentially is happening here, what a check is, how checks are used, the advantages of using checks. Um, I wanted to highlight to those IPT students out there who are doing transaction processing systems, okay, the use of MICR technology for the data collection process, okay, and how it's a big part of speeding up the process of collecting all these checks, but also the fact that this is uh, classified as a batch system where its advantages are in the fact we call out all, all the checks first and then process them all together in order to save manpower, save time, and essentially save money. So I hope this was helpful to you.